bombs clean out the last Japanese troops on the northern end of Okinawa. From the air and by artillery, their positions are blasted. Fortified caves are burned out by long-range flamethrowers. Advance. The last Japanese dugouts are dynamited. United States 10th Army troops keep cover, plotting the next leap forward. Over rough terrain, foot soldiers push toward the last ridge before the sea. Through some of the bitterest fighting of the war, they have penetrated to within sight of the northern coast, and Upper Okinawa is secure. But in the south, large enemy formations still hold out. Navy planes come over enemy positions in the hills. Gasoline jelly bombs fall. Official newsreel pictures show Lieutenant General Simon Bolivar Buckner, 10th Army Commanding General, during his last moments alive. From his command post, under heavy fire, Buckner watches the battle in the valley below him. runs to cover as enemy fire grows intense. General Buckner stays at his post. This is his last picture. Killed by an enemy shell, General Buckner now lies in the 7th Division Cemetery. His 10th Army carries on. And on the island whose capture Buckner led, the Stars and Stripes goes up, signaling final victory on Okinawa, stepping stone to Japan. Fifteen hundred miles southwest in Brunei Bay, Borneo, ships of the United States 7th Fleet open a three-day pre-invasion barrage. rendezvous point, Australian troops in infantry landing craft go forward in the first wave of invasion. The Allied commander, General MacArthur, lands with his forces. The landings are a success. From their tenders, United States Navy torpedo boats set out on a 22-hour, 170-mile mission around Brunei, vital anchorage and oil center. Crew members prepare for action. Along the coast near Seria, 2,000 Japanese are guarding extensive oil supplies. The PT boats attack.
six days after this action, these shores were secure in Allied hands. Down the ways at an American shipyard comes a strange vessel. It is one of 10 sections of a Navy floating dry dock built to service battle-damaged ships thousands of miles away from their bases. Underway in convoy, the sections begin a long journey to a combat area somewhere in the Pacific. Arriving at an assembly base in the Pacific, the dry dock contains the facilities of a good-sized shipyard and is large enough to support a battleship. Here, a cruiser damaged in action comes in. The dock submerges to receive the ship. With the cruiser safely inside, the big dry dock rises again. Such floating repair centers as this have helped increase the vast range of United States naval fleets. Wherever they go, the floating dry dock can follow. Once more, the dock submerges and the repaired cruiser moves out. In eight months, 176 ships have been sent back into battle by these floating dry docks. General Dwight D. Eisenhower, with Mrs. Roosevelt, pays homage at the grave of the late President Franklin Delano Roosevelt at Hyde Park, New York. The Supreme Allied Commander, would hope to report the victory of his armies to his chief, salutes at the grave of President Roosevelt, who died just as that victory dawned. of a five-day trip from England, the Queen Elizabeth, world's largest ocean liner, pulls into New York Harbor. Aboard are almost 15,000 American troops, most of them bound for brief furloughs at home, and then the war against Japan. On regular schedules, fleets of troop transports are bringing tens of thousands of fighting men weekly to the United States in this vast deployment operation. On the transport West Point, more soldiers for redeployment and an incidental cargo of Japanese diplomats captured in Europe. General Hiroshi Oshima, Japan's ambassador to the now non-existent Third Reich, a founder of the Berlin-Tokyo Axis, leads 33 enemy diplomats ashore. They have seen German power crushed. Across the American continent at San Francisco, the other end of the redeployment program is in full swing as formations of hardened American troops board ship for combat in the Pacific. This is just a beginning of the steady tide of manpower for the final battles of Japan. There's a grim job ahead, and these men will do it. 